In this video, how I built my hillside office. Before I go into the build process, I'd like to show you some tests that I did. These are little planters that I used to model all of the needs the foundation is going to have. It has the same corners, the recessed panels, how to seal the corners, the right kind of form material, the right kind of sealant for the edges of the panels, and a few other things. I iterated through about five or six of these, and the two you see here are the ones that ended up okay. Do you see those corners made of concrete with the rebar sticking out? I poured those about three feet deep. I don't have any images of us doing the pour, but I poured them so deep to keep them from tilting or tipping if that hillside wanted to slough a little. I figured it'd add the extra protection. You can see here a ditch I dug alongside the deck to make room for the form work, and it had to be wide enough to handle the forms, not just the concrete. You can kind of see the deck here with visqueen on top. That's going to be the portion that's under the slab, and the visqueen is to keep water from coming out too quickly so the concrete doesn't set up fast and crack. You can see the framework under there. It's all reclaimed lumber, but I used a lot of it. It was a three-quarter inch deck with one foot centers for the joists to handle the weight. These are the curved archways that are the underside of what the arch is going to be. And I built the assembly on the bench. The whole curve, both sides, and the portion that screws to the deck were carried over in one piece and flushed to the top of the deck. So that allowed me to do all the math and measuring very accurately, and I didn't have to worry about dealing with the elements. It's important to note that there's blocks underneath those upper white curves. You can kind of see the nail holes there that are filled with silicone. So they're stout. It's, the upper portion is just there to create a surface for the concrete not to stick to. And it was really important for me to get all these dimensions correctly because the post form boards had to match up exactly to the curves and the deck and make the curve of that under portion kind of follow through to the inside of the post. The order of operations is important in a build like this. You can see the rebar is tied up before I installed the corner posts. I wouldn't be able to get to them otherwise. So there was a lot of forethought and planning to which piece went on first and last. I used a form grade plywood on this project. It has paper on it that is designed to release from the concrete easily. You also add a release agent and it helps a little bit. You can see the panels are all attached to the insides of these corner posts. The edges were routed with an OG router bit and I had to basically rub down the edge of every single panel with silicone to seal the raw wood because otherwise the concrete would stick. I, I learned this from the tests I did earlier. Here's the inside of a pillar with all the panels installed. It's basically like building cabinets in reverse. These are the arched pieces that go on the short end and the long side, respectively. Now you can see the corner posts are installed with some bracing around, bracing bands around the base down there. It's really important to get them lined up to the curve. I actually carved the inside of the form boards to match that arch so they would marry. Now you can see the curved arched panels installed on the inside of the walls. And I had to reach down in there and seal every joint around every panel and every curve. So we're at a point here where it's almost complete, just have to do the front portion. And another view of the rebar down the center of the pillar legs on the lower side. I had to make sure that they didn't hit any of the panels or, you know, because you don't want that rebar to come out through the face of the concrete on the finished product. And I used 5 8 rebar, one foot on center, uh, primarily to make it span over that deck without touching because I didn't want to have to support it because the underside of that deck will be visible and if I used support blocks you would see them coming through the underside so stronger rebar. You can kind of see some foam down there. I used foam to fill all the joints between the earth and the form that were necessary. I want to draw your attention to the 2x6 edge band on the form. You can see it's installed flat to kind of reinforce the plywood to give it some rigidity. This is very important to keep that 
upper slab portion where the shed would be built eventually completely square and straight. I also want to draw your attention to all of the bracing along the bottom and along the sides of the form. This is all very important. You have to build it to where you can disassemble it without destroying the concrete, but it also has to be strong enough to handle the pressures, especially at the bottom of those pillars where you have about six feet of pressure building up on those columns. It varies depending on how you're going to pour, with what rate of speed you're going to pour, and how or if you're going to vibrate the concrete to get the air bubbles out. And these all have to be taken into consideration with your particular build. Now on a project like this where the forms support the concrete, it's important for the concrete to reach full structural cure. And in this case, it was 30 ridiculous days of anticipation before I could actually start pulling some of the panels off and seeing how the concrete actually did during the pouring process. I actually broke down and took some of the side panels off early. I figured it'd be okay because it's not really part of the support and man am I so happy with the result. All of the edge detail and panel details were preserved perfectly. The corners came out without checking. Really turned out good. It was surprising how few voids were in this pour. I think that is attributed to the type of concrete we used. We used what they call a six sack mix and that just means that there's six sacks of cement in one yard of concrete and also the aggregate is a smaller aggregate to create a higher PSI and they have to do that to be able to pump it through a concrete pump. We did end up using a vibratory process, but we were very careful not to do it too much because it can add a lot to the pressure at the base of the forms and they can blow out. Here's some of the wall framing. I did about half of the framing with lumber that was reclaimed. I think I had to buy the studs. Both windows were free from a job too. If I had to do it over again, I would put in an operable window because such a small space it's nice to have a window that you can open. All of the exterior plywood was an old floor and the rafters were from a ceiling from a I think an office teardown. You can see here we're putting the roof on that's my brother. Front side was about 10 feet off the ground the back side I think was close to 20 so a little sketchy out there. It's nothing if you're used to roofing though. And here's the corner trim and the doors are installed. I had to buy the doors. But we're about to start the siding process. This is all a cellulose and cement type siding. I really like the way it looks. As you can see on the front there, there's a switch and power. I ran power so I could have lights facing down the hill and toward the yard and also I ran data so I could run my computers and be part of the home network. Here's some of the finished product without paint. I ended up selling this home and if I had the choice to take part of that home with me it would have been this build. Obviously impossible to do but a very very fun and rewarding project. Here's the picture of the inside again not a very pretty office but very functional. I'll have the materials and tools and a reference book I used for this build listed in the description. If you'd like to see my new projects when they come out please subscribe. Thank you!